The Dallas Mavericks and NBA champion. Everything you can do, I do it better. Yeah, Mark Cuban, check this out. I always do everything better than you. Wow, with his own hype video coming in now. Longtime owner of the Dallas Mavs, of course. I don't, not even an intro. Mark Cuban joins the show this morning. Uh, good morning, sir. And uh, we got to start with Chandler. Obviously, <laughs> spent some time in Dallas. Is your biggest fan of the team, the organization, always, always there. I need an embarrassing story oh, or, boy. or seven. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I mean, we were just talking about him banging me so that like I had we were in New York not long ago Whoa. and I was walking into a restaurant and like he had the door he lets the door go and it's this big heavy door smacks me right in the middle of the forehead so now I'm walking to a restaurant blood dripping down <laughs> this did happen this did, but this I'm telling the guy stopping taking pictures of everybody kissing baby shaking hands like well, I'm gonna go inside I'm gonna grab the table and I thought he was looking and the door just comes and just whacks oh. him right, Dude. right he's literally Bam. holding it you're not a good friend I, it good was an friend. accident I'm sorry he was mad because everyone wanted to take pictures. You, did he? Um, did he sign his contract in a nightclub? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure in Orlando. Absolutely, we got pictures and everything. Uh, it was great. I mean, we always had fun. There was never not having fun with with CP. It, it was a great run. Cubes is the man. I will say this: ever since I retired, to you know, obviously everyone knows him, Shark Tank as well. Every investment I've ever done, I email it to him. The guy responds within oh. 10 minutes. Usually, when he says no, I turn it down. When he <laughs> says yes, I invest a lot of money. So I appreciate that, Mark. You've always been very, very good to me. Besides that, and I know it's work, Chandler. I know it's work because you can afford that haircut. I, I don't mean, know how much you spend on that, but it gets, get your money back. <laughs> I'm getting ready for stagecoach. I've never been, so I'm, inter I'm, I'm challenging my white. You are the inner, dorkiest My inner white trash. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets ready for stagecoach? All right, Cubes, the Mavs, they play the Clippers in the first round. Series starts on Sunday. What worries you, Man. if anything, the most about the Clippers? I mean, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi. I mean, you know, it, this is a battle to see you know, how we can deal with Kawhi when he's playing defense and on both sides of the ball. And so we have to be able to contain him. And if we can do that, I like our chances. Hmm. Mark, obviously, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, those are your two leaders. They've played at high level. Luka Doncic, MVP caliber, Kyrie Irving, 26 points a game, five rebounds a game, five assists a game. Is this what you envisioned when you made that trade for Kyrie Irving last season? Uh, has it exceeded your expectations? Yeah, it, it's what we envisioned, and now it has exceeded our, our expectations um, simply because they're playing together so well. You know, when you get a, two superstars together, sometimes it's my turn, your turn, and that's just not the way they play together. They, they play together where they read the tempo of the game, they read the circumstances, and they get the ball to the, the guy who deserves it. And so when someone tries to trap Luca, you know, Kai's going right to the center of the court, you know, free throw line and playing four or three. It's just uh, their ability to just play the right way together is everything. See, that's what happened when I signed in Dallas. You got two superstars with me nope. and Dirk, and that's why, that it, didn't, that's why it didn't pay it <laughs> out, Cubes. <laughs> you guys, you guys it was were, hard, uh, CP. So we had to try, so though. <laughs> Mark, you guys were 10 and 18 after trading for Kyrie last, last season. Was there ever a moment where you thought maybe we made a mistake and this wasn't going to work out? You never know, right? You know, it was more, you know, last season... You know, when when Ty game here, Luca was hurt, and then we had to just quickly try to integrate the two together. They didn't really get a chance to know each other. There was, you know, you know how it goes, Luel. There's just lots of talk around. Everybody's trying to figure things out. So yeah, I was concerned, but once we got to the summer, it was pretty obvious that this was going to work. Mark, there's obviously you're you're on Twitter a lot. One of the things you are tweeting a lot about is MVP for Luca Doncic. I see you absolutely tweeting every single day about MVP. <laughs> Why do you think he should be the MVP over Shea Gilles Alexander, over Nikola Jokic, mm -hmm. any other candidate? No disrespect to those guys, but I mean, for Luca has just put up just generational numbers. I mean, you know, the the, the numbers speak for themselves. When there's every statistical analysis you can put together, Luca shows up on top. And people talk about, okay, well, you know, we didn't have a great start to the mm -hmm. season. We finished great. Luca w was everything to that. I mean, he integrated Kai. We got two new guys in. Um, we have a rookie center. He made everybody better. We have guys. I mean, two were two guys. Um, Dante Exum and Derek Jones Jr. were minimum signees, and he's made them just 
take their game to the very next level. We had a rookie center starting until we got Gaff, and he took him to the next level. So the MVP is somebody who makes everybody around you better. I mean, what Doc, what Luca has done with the guys around him has just been insane. And then, you know, up until we sat everybody those last two games, we were 16 and two in our last 18 games. I don't, I don't think there's any question that Luca has carried us, carried us all the way to this point. Yeah, I'm surprised, Chandler. You haven't been fighting that good fight. Well, I'm looking at your the Mark Followell, uh, Followell, the the MVP tweet. It's insane. Some of these stats: the most points yeah. created, 57; the most points, rebounds, assists, and 71, 72. There are some crazy stats. I just think when you're talking about the Thunder and the Nuggets, who've been battling for the number one seed, that's the only thing that's really hurting his case. If you guys were a top three seed, a home court advantage team, I think he's got a real chance. Yeah, but look at the last 20 games, CP. I mean, there's no doubt. Look, we need a we. The the Rocket or the Nuggets are the defending champs, right? So you knew they had a good squad, especially with Jamal um, um, healthy. You knew the Thunder had a good squad last year, and they got better this year. They're young, yes, but they have you know they have Chet. They have a lot of great players around. Jalen Williams, probably one of the most underrated players in the NBA. You know. We, they weren't taking just guys that we just added to the roster, that they just added to the roster and going to that second seed. And even then, we're, what, four games, five games behind them? And that's after a midseason run. And, you know, the first time we played them, we, we or the second the second, the second last time we played them, we destroyed them, and then we almost beat them without Luka. I mean, you know, they're a good team, but what Luka has done for us is just insane. I don't think there's any question. He deserves every MVP vote. And if you don't vote for him, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I got a vote. Luckily, we, we don't, don't have votes. Yeah, we're good. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, okay. With, and he's talking to you. He's talking with to you. With that yeah. being said, is this the best team Luka's ever had around him? Yeah, for sure. Not even close. You know, like, Lucas was asked, what's the difference? And he just said Kyrie. Kyrie has learned that... You know, he, Kyrie knows how to be the second best player on the team, having played with LeBron. He knows how to fit in. He knows how to make the best player even better and to, to know time and situation to, you know, where the ball goes and what he needs to do. And, I mean, that's just made Luka's job easier, but it's made the whole team better. And so, yeah, this is easily the best squad we've had around LD. I mean, obviously, he's getting a statue at some point. The Dirk statue is cool, but all of us fresh in our memories right now have the Allen Iverson statue situation. The going, yeah, the Heisman <laughs> Trophy that was. Um, uh, what goes into that? And also, is there going to be a, a sort of a, a rivalry between Dirk's statue and whatever Luca gets? Um, you know, I can't speak for Philly. I, I guess they had like a Hall of Fame row or something, <laughs> so everybody's with the same size. But, you know, Dirk was iconic for us, and, and Luca certainly is, is there as well. So, you know, I'll, I'll have to talk to both of them, get them in a room, and we'll decide whose statue <laughs> will end up being bigger. But, yeah, I mean, there's no question LD has earned it. Well, Dirk's got a statue and a street. That's true. The street is so yep. God knows key. what's That's coming key. for Luca. It's been on record many times. Dirk has even said it that he already thinks that Luca is a better player than him, and you've yeah. agreed with that. So is he the greatest Mav of all time already? Be, yeah, right? yeah, Dirk is going to disagree with me, but he is. And the difference is, you know, <laughs> Luca can control all aspects of a game. With Dirk, you had to get him the ball in his spot. He's not going to bring the ball up and just attack. And I think that's the big difference. And, um, you know, there's no disrespect to either. They're both, you know, top 10, top 15 players of all time. And so I think the bigger question is, where will Luca rank all time? And I don't think there's any question. He has the ability to be top two, top three all time. Yeah, when did you know that? Like, when, when did you know when he first came? Was there a moment in practice, in the gym, his rookie season? When did you know he was going to be this elite of a player? Probably his rookie season um, when he hit that three-point um, three shot against Portland with, like, half a second to go, which was just one of the most insane shots ever. And then you start realizing when it's win time, that's when Luka really turns on, and that's when he really has an impact on the game. And there's so few players that when it's come down to crunch time, you want the ball in their hands because you know they're going to be able to make a play. And we started seeing that his rookie year, and it was just as insane how was he was able to do it. We were talking about in the first block, like, is Clay Thompson going to leave? How weird would that look? Is there a scenario that you can even imagine that Luke is not a Mav one day? I hope not. No I mean, you never know, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly hope not. I hope he's here 26 years, you know? Um, he started younger than Dirk, and so hopefully he's, you know, and technology's better. Hopefully he's playing into his mid-40s and healthy and just <laughs> crushing it for us. Mark, how much has Dirk 
Nowitzki meant to your franchise. What is something about Dirk that we don't know that the people don't know? Give us, give us something new here. Um, oh my God. I mean, Dirk's Mr. Tennis and paddleball or pickleball now, but, um, he's just a good guy. I mean, you know, like <laughs> I dropped my son off the other day at one of his friend's houses and he said, dad, and I'm like, I'm not even dressed. Right. I just have a pair of shorts and a tank top on. And he, and he texts me, he goes, Dirk's in here. You got to come and come on and hang out. And I'm like, you know, there's like all these other people all dressed up. I'm like, I can't, but that's just Dirk, man. He's just going to be everywhere in the neighborhood. He's hanging out with family, friends, everybody all the time. He's just a great guy. There's no airs. It's not like, hey, I'm Dirk. You know, you know, you got to treat me differently. He's just one of the guys. He's just hanging out. He doesn't care. He's just a good dude. Dirk played all 21 of his seasons with the Mavericks. You obviously never traded him, but did you ever come close? Did you, was there any wild Ooh. offers for Dirk? No, I mean, even when we thought we had traded for Kobe, we went, um, we didn't even consider including Dirk in that deal. And I told Dirk that, you know, and I thought we had that deal done um, until Mitch Kupchak changed Kobe's mind. But yeah, there's ne there was never a point where we were even close. Ne never even came up. What, what has been one of the hardest player personnel decisions you've had to make since owning the Mavericks? You know, um, it's funny because I remember vividly sitting in our locker room with Chandler on the leg press machine talking about his next contract and he was rehabbing from injury and having to go through the whole conversation with Chan that um look you know there's so much uncertainty about you know your injury we can't give you what you want um if you you know want to go for a lower number and then come back and prove it we'll do it but that was that was brutal that was one of the most brutal conversations ever <laughs> so, so, so Mark, uh, checks a, out. Concur. A, checks few, out. a few months ago, uh, you sold uh, a, a majority ownership sale in the Dallas Mavericks. Um, why was it now the time to partner with Adelson's? And has it been easy for you to have this dual role now where you're leading basketball operations? And your yeah, I mean, it's been easy because, I mean, look, you see me at the games, nothing's really changed from that side of it. I'm still all in and having fun and. I can still dogpile when Kyrie hits a game winner. You know, it's it's still a blast. But in terms of why, you know, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. When it came to tech and media, I knew my stuff really well. I mean, Shams, you and I talk about media and the industry all the time. I, I know that stuff cold, but I don't think that's what's going to drive growth, revenue growth um, in the NBA going forward. It's not to say that this next TV deal won't be good. I'm not involved in that, so I, I don't have any details, but I think it'll be great. But really, if you look to see where the revenue for a team is coming going forward, it's really real estate development. And if we can get um, resort gaming in the state of Texas, it, it'll be insane. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, Dallas becomes a, res, you know, a, a tourist destination. And I just don't have the skill set to be able to do that. And I didn't want to be in a position where it's like, OK, I'm going to have to pay a boatload of money to try to learn on the go to do this. Patrick Dumont, you know, he runs the Sands. He loves basketball. It, you know, it, it's been a great partnership with both with from both ends. I mean, I love working with them. But, you know, the Sands Corporation is the world's best at building arenas, building casinos. And so it was just it's just been a great partnership. That's why I, I was I was thinking I always wanted to work in the NBA, Mark. But now me being a casino floor host in Dallas, when once the casino <laughs> opens out right? there. Right. Can you imagine? Like I think a, that's more my calling. God. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Could you imagine a Venetian in downtown Dallas? Oh, it would kill it. It would be or, unbelievable. It, it would just be insane. And, I, you know, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think it will happen. So, Mark, when the sale like <laughs> that happens, like, how does that even, tra how does that transaction work? Is it just straight wired to your account? Hold I, on, it's a rich people conversation. Yeah, like, Everybody I, I see all the, all the Twitter <laughs> stuff about the taxes. Did you really just have to wire yeah. $276 million in taxes? Like, how, what's the process yeah. like? Does it literally just hit your account one day and you're like, holy shit, I just got... <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. pretty much. <laughs> you know, it's, me, it's me with my phone going, come yeah. on, baby, come yeah. on. Wow. Dinner's on you that night. So it literally just comes right through, and that's what? it. Right. And then, then, like, yesterday, whatever it was, two days ago, it was like, okay, you know, and I'm, you know and look, it's a good problem to have. And, and it's not the first time I've had to write big checks like that or send a lot of money to the IRS. But I might say, you know, I'm proud of it. I didn't say I loved it. But, um... <laughs> It is what it is, and, and I'm glad I can contribute.
Wow. Um, you and I, Mark, were both in the critically acclaimed Sharknado 3. Uh, <laughs> I, I played the limo driver driving Ian Ziering to the White House to meet with the president, played by you. Um, like, yep. We now know a lot more about what it takes to be president of the United States in these last several years. <laughs> Are you thinking maybe it's in your future? You know, you saw me in Sharknado 3. You know that if you give me a gun and it's my house to protect, I'll be there taking on every shark that comes out of the sky. That's going to be my platform, and that's how I'm run. When the sharks come, I'll be there. This is, I mean, it's the, worst, what, it's the worst best movie. You're you looking at it. your fucking vice president. No, no! Because no. I don't want in. No. Let, let me just tell you, filming that movie was a blast because, <laughs> like, as you know, like, when they when people got killed, there it was all special effects after the fact, right? And so there was like Rick Fox. Well, so when people had to die, there was like Rick Fox laying on the floor doing doing this. Right? It's so bad. It's the best worst. You have we do we need to do it. By the way, just promise whatever you do politically and, and however that plans out, this man can be nowhere near anything important. Oh, come on. Come on. No, see, Pete, he's definitely going to be in my cabinet. Oh, God. Uh, Ambassador to some cabinet, beautiful right? Island. He's going to be in charge of the liquor cabinet. <laughs> the liquor cabinet. <laughs> I'm keeping stock, baby. Chandler, take us out. Yeah. This is, like, oh, this is well, it. Oh, appreciate you, Mark. Good luck in the playoffs. Uh, hopefully I'll see you at Shell Backs one of these nights, and I might even come to a game with you. Let's go, Mavs, baby. Let's hope. I'd, I'd love to see you. Thanks for having me on, guys. And Good to see you. Appreciate it.